All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to be going through a new style option called details. Now, details is very different to the ones we saw before. We saw the list, we saw the compact, we saw the tiles. Now, details is very different. Let's click on details and see what happens. So as you can see here, the, um, the view we get is very uh, unorganized, right? And as you can see down here, we have one section called components. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete these. And as you can see now, the page is empty. And the idea behind the details, um, the details styling option here is that it gives us a free form page where we can add any component we want. It doesn't, um, it doesn't make us have all the data displayed in a list. We can have the data displayed in any way we want. Now, the way that we can add new components to the page is by going up here on the top right and clicking this plus button. And this is going to give us a huge list of components that we can add on our page. So if I select the basic text component, this is just going to add a piece of text on my page. Now, this looks weird, right? This actually is the image field. So as you can see here on the data section, the data that we get here is the image is, is from the image field, right? So we actually get the URL of the image. So that's not useful in any case. So we need to change that to something more useful, such as the title, right? Now, you might be wondering, like, what is this thing right here? This is because on the components, you can also have features. And the features are things like uh, when you click on this, you can have it linked to an, a different page, you can send an email, you can show a form and so many different useful things. But for now, we're going to talk about these actions later on. For now, I'm just going to set this to none, you know, and this is just going to give me a basic text component. Um, now, this is not very useful, right? Because um, in our case, we want to display all these articles that we're going to have here. Right. So this only this is only able to display one piece of text. And in this case, it just takes the first article of this list by default. You know, so there is no way to to customize this. There is no way to select which title we want to see It's super like um, not useful at this point. Right. So I'm going to delete this component. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find a component which is more like a list. Right. So um let's see. So we have lists here and we have an inline list. Now, what this means, guys, if I click on that, you can see now we get a list of the articles, but this is not the same as um, as the style list. If I click on this, the whole page is going to be a list. Now, if I go on my details on the details view, I have now added an inline list. What this means is that Above the inline list, I can add any component I want. So I can add a basic text and I can bring it above the list. You know, I can add another basic text and I can bring it below the list right there. So the inline list is just an element of the page It's not the whole page, right? It's just a small element of this page, right? So I hope you understand how uh, the details view works. You know, it allows you to just put so many different components on one whole page and just customize your app in any way you want. Right. So this is a uh, this is a style that I'm using a lot. You know, with every app I create, I always end up using the details because it allows me to add a lot of features on one page, you know, instead of just showing a list on one page. You know, this would be a useful component if you were creating like a um, like a directory app or maybe like um, uh, I can't think of anything right now, maybe like a, like a database style of app, you know, you would maybe use this component, but in a, in a, in an app where you want to have like a, like a nice page with a lot of different elements, the details option is very useful. So I'm going to delete these basic text components. And now let's focus on this inline list. Um, so as you can see now, I have selected the inline list. But here I also get more styling options, right? So within this inline list, I can also select different styling options, right? So I can have a compact list. I can have a titles list, you know, as I had before, you know, I can have the calendar map and so on, right? So 
even within this list, we can still select the way that we want to present this data. So that's really nice. Um, I'm going to keep the tiles. And as you can see here, we get the source. So this is where we want to um, source the data from for this list. And remember, guys, when we, we were setting up the tabs, we said that every page is going to have a source of data. However, on a details page, so on a details style page, you can have as a main source, the one you set up here, right? Um, however, you can also for for specific elements such as the inline list, you can it, it's go, it's going to allow you to select sources. Uh, I know this is a little bit confusing, but the idea is, for example, on the basic text component, right? We do not have a source to select the data from, right? By default, the data source is the one that we have right here, right? So you got to think of it like that. Um, so for the basic text, the fields that we have available here are the ones that are, are on the breaking news sheet, right? So that's the idea behind this, this model. Um, and another use case that actually makes this useful is, for example, think of CNN, guys. Okay, let's go to the home page of CNN, right? So think of this home page as the home page of our app. As you can see here, they have the breaking news section right here or whatever, and then they have a coronavirus section right here, and then they have um, a business section right here. So, for example, in my app, if I wanted to to have um, a small inline list of all the local, or I should say a small inline list of some local news, right, which I, I can actually show you. So if I create another inline list, right, I can select the source of values to be the local news. And as you can see here, um, I need to change the label to local news. As you can see here, I now have a small section which displays the local news, even though, even though on the breaking news page, which I'm currently on, the source is breaking news, right? This is why this, um, this is powerful because even though the main source of the page is the breaking news sheet, I'm still able to get some data from another sheet and create this small section here called local news. So I really hope that makes sense, guys, and how that's useful. Um, in this case, my 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 um, source for the values is still the breaking news page, uh, the, the breaking news sheet, sorry. Um, and then the title, so this component right here is the title, the details is this component right here, and then the image is this right here. I want to change this to three ratio two. And I think that, that looks good. Now, let's see what else we can add on this page. So um, we could add a welcome text, maybe, right? So we can add, I'm going to use the rich text, and I'm going to show you why. So if I add a rich, rich text, and I bring it to the top of the page right there, with the rich text, what I can do is select to get some data from the spreadsheet, but I can also enter some custom text. So I could say uh, something like, um, hello, here are the latest news, right? And another really cool thing about this is that you can add some markdown. Now, if you guys don't know what markdown is, it's basically some special characters that you can add within the text in order to format it, right? So if I add three hashtags here, this is uh, this represents the heading three element, right? If I add two hashtags, this is H2. If I add one hashtag, this is H1. So there's so many different uh, things you can do in order to uh, style your text, right? So I could add a welcome title. And then below that, I could have a separator, you know, which is a nice line to separate the text from the news, you know, maybe I could remove this label right here. So I go to the inline list and I remove the label, right? 
So you, you get the idea this this way you just design your page in any way you want. Now what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to so I mean you get the idea you can add any component you want and I can't go through every single one of these components. If there's some components you want me to go through specifically please let me know in the comments below give me some suggestions and I might make a specific video for a component to show you um, how it can be done and how it works. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you what happens when we click on an element in a list and this is the same whether we click on an element in the inline list or if we click on an element so if our style was list and we clicked on an element I'm gonna show you what happens there so let's go back to details and let's click on an element in our inline list so as you can see here we're now getting new page right so when we click on an element this is the page for that specific article right so this is the page where we would normally display the the whole article right so here we have a preview now we want to display the article so let's see how we would go about um, customizing that I think that the first thing we need to do is add a field on our spreadsheet called article right and I will actually bring this here um, this the text is huge so they get overlapped but I'm just gonna make this bold so if I type something here it should yeah um, so I'm gonna add an article now new columns found I'm gonna click yes and now let's go to our article here and let's just copy a little bit from here um, and I'm just gonna copy that here try reconnecting okay so I'm gonna refresh my spreadsheet okay so it seems that didn't get saved I'm gonna make this bold again let's paste in the article I'm gonna select the format that I have on this field and I'm gonna bring it over to this so hmm this is interesting okay so I don't know why it did that there um, let's see if I can remove the link from that text okay so I saw I saw on link I saw on a link option there we go so now we get a nice text here as you can see on this field so um what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to glide and there we go so let's refresh once again so it gets all the data and now what I want to do is get rid of actually no we want the image but the reason why the image is displayed as a URL is because the component for this as you can see is basic text so we actually need to delete that and we need to add a new component called image right and it automatically assigns uh, the the data to the image field right so um, I think I would add that to the top but I mean guys there's so many different components here so uh, I, I just added an image component but actually I think it would be better if I delete this and go to this title component this is another interesting component which um, allows you to have the title there but it also allows you to add an image below it there so that looks much nicer so there are so many different components you can experiment with I'm just familiar with these ones so um, I know what they do so that adds the title there I can even add a short description under the title you know but that's too long so I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna leave it and or I could actually put the author right there um, and then have the image on the background and then here we have a text component so I'm, uh, that's the author and I'm gonna delete that because I already added it there and then below we have the article which has been assigned to the article field so that's perfect and I'm, I'm also gonna remove the label because there's no point of just saying that's the article we already know that so here we go we have now created this inner page for the article now of course we could add more components you know we could 
um, we could add a date, for example, below the article. But of course, in order to do that, we would first have to create the field on our spreadsheet. So we'd have to create a date field. Um, and then here, uh, let's say what date is today, 4th of April uh, 2020. And I'm going to say this is 3rd of April 2020. Um, and then if I go here, I need to reload my sheet again. New columns found, yes. Let's go back here. So as you can see, it has now added a basic text component date, right? Um, and yeah, guys, that's the idea. Like you can just keep on adding as much data as you want. And now this this template that we created here for the um, for the article, this thing is going to be applied to every single element in our inline list, right? So when I click on this one now, the same style appears here, right? Um, so I hope that makes sense, guys. And then you can, of course, keep on adding elements, keep on adding data. And that's how you construct your page. Um, so this is it for this video, guys. Now, on the next video, we're going to start exploring some more interesting components and how you can uh, how the user who is going to be using this app, how he can actually add data to your app. You know, that's another. So we mentioned on the introduction of this video series that this is going to be a crude application. So create, read, update and delete. So far, we've done um, a read and uh, that's pretty much it. We only done read so far because we have set up a, a spreadsheet with some data and we're able to read the data from the spreadsheet and apply to the app. Now, on the next video, we're going to start, uh, we're going to look on how to create data and how the user can add data to our app. All right, guys. So I'm going to see you in the next video.